Hey guys, welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you the difference between sum and sumx function. I'm going to teach you when you should use sum function and when you should use the sumx function. Most of the Power BI users generally get confused between these two functions. Both of these functions perform aggregation. However, they work very, very differently. If you are trying to master Power BI, it is very, very important for you to understand the difference between these two because these are the basic functions in Power BI. So let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to tell, teach you is, so basically what we are going to do here is we have two columns over here which we, we will be working with. One is the unit price and second is the quantity. Now let's talk about the first function which is the sum function. So what the sum function does is basically uh, it takes the column and then it performs an aggregation on this entire column and then gives us a result, right? So it takes the entire unit price column, it sums the entire column, the unit price, and then returns a particular value. So what I want to do here right now is basically, I want to multiply my unit price with the quantity to arrive at the sales amount. Now, I'm going to teach you how the different, how the results are going to be different when you use sum and sum x function. So let's start, start with the sum function over here. So I'm going to start with writing a new measure here. I'm going to call this as sum of units so, and then I'm typing sum and then I'm going to sum the quantity column over here. Okay. And now as you can see here, I cannot perform another sum. For example, I cannot say comma and then uh, enter the uh, second column over here, which is unit price. The Power BI will not let me do this because it is grayed out and the function is not intended to sum multiple columns or even multiply two different columns over here. It will not let me do that because it is grayed out, right? So I'll have to just create one uh, function over here with the sum or I have to, I can sum only one column at a time over here and then I'm going to press enter and then uh, now I'll have to create another measure to sum the unit price. So sum of unit price is equals to sum and then unit price. Okay, I'm going to sum this. And now you will say that we can go ahead and just multiply sum of sales is equals to now you will say that I can simply multiply. So I can say sum of unit price multiplied by sum of units. Okay, so now you will see it say that, okay, now I've multiplied these two columns and it is now, it should now give me the correct results. Okay, I also have the correct results column over here, which is there as part of my uh, data set. I, I will bring in that amount as well. So this is my original sales. So I'm going to just rename this and call this as original sales. And this is sum of sales. So as you can see over here, the, sum, the original sales is 10.19. The sum of sales is also 10.19. And it is, in 10, it is showing you the uh, amounts here, which is exactly matching with the original sales column. Uh, however, you will see that the totals are incorrect, right? The actual sales amount for this particular period is only 5,360. However, in the sum of sales column, it is showing it as 154,421, right? The first thing that we notice here is the totals are incorrect, okay? Now, I'm going to show you in a bit that these values will also be incorrect. I'll, I'm going to come to that in a bit. Right now, we will just analyze this. So all of this, it, it is now looking fine. Uh, also, remember that right now we have unit price and we have quantity column as well in this particular table okay so just keep that in mind we'll come to that in a bit and now uh, let's go ahead and create the sum x function okay so sum x of sales is equals to now i'm gonna say sum x okay so and then the first argument in the sum x uh, uh, function here is oh uh, let me just okay the first argument here is to enter the table name. In my case, it is sales. So I'm going to enter that. And now it is the second expression over here is basically asking us to enter an expression. Here you can do, you can perform any sort of arithmetic calculation. You can multiply between columns. You can subtract between columns. You can divide, you can add, you can do anything with that particular column. So in our case over here, we are going to multiply two columns over here. The first column is 
unit price. So I'm going to select the unit price column. Remember that these two are the measures that we created. We are not going to use the measure. We are going to use the actual column which is there in our data set which is sales unit price. Okay, I'm going to multiply this with the quantity. So this, this is sales quantity. This again is a column in our data set. It is not a measure that we have created. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. So let's bring in the sumx of sales now and you will see that these values are exactly the same in all three columns. However, now the totals are same uh, compared with our original sales column. The sum x of sales totals is matching with the original sales column, right? So now you will say that all three uh, of these uh, uh, fields or uh, columns that we have here, one of them is two of them are measures over here are working as intended to be, right? Uh, that's what it looks like as of now. But uh, when you are presenting the data uh, to somebody, you would not want to have the unit price and quantity as well. Uh, uh, in the part in that particular table as I mean the you don't want to have the every product a line item in that particular table in that case you are not going to have unit price you're not going to have quantity right so now what happens right so as you can see over here our original sales column is furniture is 3722 what's happening with some of sales right now so it is now multiplying that with yeah, multiplying it is basically summing the entire amount and then multiplying with the uh, uh, quantity over there right and it is showing us incorrect results so the total sales amount is also incorrect the sum function is only going to work when you have the line item available if you understand the filter context right so it is it avail it is it works only when you have the line item level but when you're trying to aggregate it the sum function does not work the way it is intended to work right so that is why you have the sum x function which is exactly matching with our original sales amount so basically what the sum x function is doing is it is important for you to understand what the sum x function is doing as well so that you'll be able to understand the concept better of the sum x function so sum x function literally goes into every single row for example in this case it goes to first row 43.13 multiplies by 11 goes to second second row 16.59 multiplies by 11 goes to third row 30.98 multiplies by 5 and then it saves the entire calculation into a temporary memory before it displays the result in the uh, table that we have or a card that we have. So once the result is displayed, it then flushes out the temporary memory and then it only shows the result. Uh, so this is how the sumx function works. But in case of sum, what happens is that it sums the entire column, it sums the entire quantity column, and then it takes the result of those two columns and then multiply them together and bring in the results. That is why you see that these values are not matching, right? So this is basically the difference between sum and sum x. So if you want, you can also do a plus over here and do addition of these two columns. You can do division of these two columns and it will go row by row, it, it will iterate over row over row and bring us the right results. So this, this, these are the basic differences between the sum and the sumx function. Uh, so I hope you have understood now the difference between sum and sumx. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. So please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.